If you've been watching this series, you already know how to use built-in modes in Killer Code. Now we want to bring it to a whole new level by learning how to use available modes from Mode Marketplace and also how to build your own. Let's go! Now you can install new modes using Mode Marketplace and there is a pretty nice suggestion there. Let's take a look. First thing, we need to click on the Marketplace. There are MCPs and there are modes. And there are already prepared some very nice modes like Documentation Specialist, Frontend Specialist, Tent Engineer, Test Engineer, some others, and more to come. Installation is super simple, so you can just uh, click on the install for the code skeptic, for example, decide if you want to have it installed for project or globally for all workspaces you work with. I will go here with project one, for example. And that's it. It's getting available immediately. Um, how to use it? Very simple. You can just get it here now in this uh, drop down. Code Skeptic is available immediately. Please notice what installing just all the modes in case you might need them install, especially install them globally, it might be not a great idea. They are getting into the system prompt and you don't want it to be crowded with something you are not going to use. So highly suggested to add uh, in general only project wise and uh, those modes you are really going to use. So don't overfill your context, don't, over, don't overfill your prompt. Uh, there is really no need on that. Now, uh, desired mode you can use just like a built-in mode, but uh, what it includes and how to take a look deeper on what's in. As you see, there is new file, killer code modes. You can take a look at this file and there will all the more custom modes define it. So in this case, we have one custom mode called Code Skeptic. There uh, we have like very skeptical engineer and code quality inspector who questions everything. It's a great mode to scan for potential bad code, smelly code, spaghetti code, something you don't want to have on production. And uh, it has uh, group commands to read, to edit files, uh, to use browser, to use console commands, and to use MCPs. By the way, of course, you can tune it here uh, by deleting. So less uh, groups it has, less tools it has. Well, wonderful, then uh, less uh, smaller system prompt for this mode uh, is getting. And now, uh, there are custom instructions for this mode, so you can walk through and see how it will work. Also, adjust it to your likings. And then you can just add this, uh, use this code skeptic to roast some file, for example. And mm, that's it. So this mode will be used for reviewing things. Uh, next mode uh, you also might want to see and I suggest to use often is a documentation writer. Documentation writer is a very convenient thing and if your um, current task is not uh, overdone, if it's like within reasonable uh, context window size now, you might develop a new feature and then ask documentation writer to just design a documentation for this feature you just done this. Notice, now in AI agentic coding, best thing work is a mono repository when you have your documentation right in the same repo. It's super convenient. That's how killer code is being developed right now. Feature develop it, then documentation writer runs the documentation, which is available if in the same repository. And basically that's it. Works super simple. So now you can install it obviously the very same way as we just install it uh, code skeptic we just click on the installation of a documentation specialist and let's say i'm going to use it globally then i can install it globally notice what those uh, modes are again nothing but files so technically advanced custom rules files uh, well slightly better supported by them 
plugin so you see there is now custom modes file but it's located not in the project because it's not project specific but in the global storage of uh, visual studio code and application support in my case because i'm using os6 on windows machine path will be different but the overall idea stays the same uh, those groups what uh, what it can do what it can edit and notice how nicely limitations set on edit files, but only documentation files. So your documentation specialist will not edit your code or environment variables. So something like that. It's already trained to focus on clarity, give samples. So nicely prepare it mode. But what if we need to do something what doesn't fit into the existing modes built in or available on marketplace? Then you might want to create your own and we will do it right now. As I already mentioned, I am not the hugest fan of the built-in architect mode. For my likings, it's too talkative. Now, I want to keep built-in mode as it is. I will create a new mode, uh, what will be doing everything what I want in the way how I want it to be. So I will clone the default architect mode. Uh, to keep it in case something updates in the plugin, so my changes will not be overwritten or I will not delay the uh, real architect updates, I prefer to do the custom mode. How do we do that? So first I go to uh, edit of the potential models of the modes. Here I choose the mode I want to work with, so architect. There is a role definition, short description, when to use available tools and custom instructions. So I already copied them on the separate uh, file. We will not change uh, uh, architect mode. The only change I will do, I will change when to use. That's a guidance for orchestrator, when to use this mode. So uh, I will get this one. I will delete it. And I will just type where do not use this mode. So architect will not use it by default. Not use this mode. That's it. So it's as barely modified as possible. And I will be fine with that. Now I want to create a new one. I will call it quiet architect. Suggest better names in the comments. Uh, it will be available in all, in all workplaces and all the projects I'm working with. Now, role definition um, will be the same. That's experience a technical leader uh, who is inquisitive and excellent planner goal is to gather information and get context to create a detailed plan for accomplishing the user task, which the user will review and approve before they switch into another mode uh, to implement this solution. I don't want architect to switch to another mode on its own and it will have this button disabled. Um, so it will be just it. Experience a technical lead, an excellent planner, gather information, get context, create and dump. That's fine to me. Um, short description for humans will be the same, although I don't really need it. Uh, then to use. So I'm explaining to architect when to use it. Use this mode when you need to plan, design, strategize before implementation. Perfect for breaking down complex problems, creating technical specifications, designing systems, brainstorming solutions. Now available tools. Of course, it will be able to read files. Sadly, it will be, it should be able to edit files as well because it needs to write down the plan. I don't want it to use browser. Theoretically, it might be need to run commands, but for now I will disable it. I can change it later. And then I don't want it to use MCPs. For now, I might want to reconsider uh, for using of context 7. But for now, it will be fine to me. Uh, now, custom instructions, the most interesting part, part we need to pay the most attention and what I'm going to update the most. Custom instructions, the most important part to me. 
very well. Do some information gathering using provider provider tools to get more context about the task. Do information gathering, definitely. Also ask user clarifying questions to get a better understanding of the task. Very well, I want to keep it. Once gained more context about the user's request, break down task into clear actionable steps and create a to-do list using update to-do list tool. I actually don't want uh, this one to create to-do list. I want for now it's to create a markdown single markdown file like plan MD or to do MD instead. And it's not instead, that's precisely what I want. Um, later, with uh, to do list bypassing from task to task, uh, that uh, can work better without files, but for now I work with files. So, once you've gained more context about user's uh, request, break down the task into clear actionable steps and create a to do file. Create a plan file. Um, plan should be create a single plan file. Done. Yeah, I don't want it to be too big. Single, single plan file. Plan should be specific and actionable, listed in logical execution order. Focus it uh, on a single when defined outcome, clear enough what any other mode could execute it independently. Single down file. As you gather more information or discover new requirements, update that to do the plan file. Update them. Plan file. To reflect the current understanding of what needs to be accomplished. Ask the user if they are pleased with this plan or if they would like to make any changes. Think of this as a brainstorming session where you can discuss the task and refine the to-do list. Include mermaid diagrams if they help clarify complex workflows on system. Uh, I don't want... So, I understand the project usually I'm working with. I don't want mermaid diagrams where they're making this file redundant and then code mode also like uh, it's just not needed at all there. So I just remove. I don't want it to switch mode tool to request the user switch to another mode to implement the solution. I can push this button myself. Notice what the user can update file directly. While uh, reading the file, I also can change it, remove what I don't want, or uh, add something, uh, add some more consideration, that's it. Important, focus on creating clear actionable to-do items, not lists, rather than lengthy markdown documents. Use the to-do list as your primary planning tool to track and organize work what needs to be done. No, I actually don't want it. I think it's just fine like that. Um, and that's it. Read files, edit files, no browser, no run commands, no MCP. Um, should be pretty simple and uh shoot works uh should work nice to me maybe uh would be logical also to ask to include um interfaces um maybe i don't want to have the um, whole file written down in complete like what's going uh, code mode to do then but uh, i might want to ask plan mode to implement interfaces. So then in object-oriented programming, of course. Uh, so then for code mode, it will be easier to just implement those interfaces uh, in just a specific way. So something what I want to, but I will stick to that for now. And then I will evolve these uh, shy architect or quiet architect mm. to do the work I wanted to do.
Create mode. Done. Um, very well. So we see here there is um, changes in killer code mode. Ah, it's a global one, so it will be out uh, of the uh, project. So, but uh, idea doesn't change because of that. Uh, we will have this file available. So we have here quiet architect edit and edit modes configuration, edit global modes. Yeah, we see now this file custom modes, what includes here uh, what I want. And by the way, I can now editing this file, make uh, the same group updates in edit, like we just saw in documentation writer. Uh, so architect will be allow it only to write uh, markdown files. So it will be um, much simpler and more safe for us knowing what it's not going anywhere out of the scope I wanted to use. And that's how you install your new modes or create your own custom modes for some specific tasks so you make killer code more convenient to use for yourself i enjoy efficiency of great tools and killer code offers you incredible options here for customization well and in the next coding session we are going to add some more features into our to-do app so keep watching see you there